You're listening to Three Kitchens, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. Join your hosts, Heather Dyer, Sarah Somasundaram, and Aaron Walker for good food and some fun in the kitchen. We acknowledge that Three Kitchens is recorded on traditional Treaty 7 territory and acknowledge the Métis people who also share a deep connection with this land. This episode of Three Kitchens is brought to you by the Alberta Association of Optometrists, proudly celebrating a century of caring for Albertans. It happens. Parents can easily miss their child's eye problems. Issues can occur in only one eye, making them difficult to notice. The earlier an eye health or vision problem is identified, the more likely it can be corrected. The IC I Learn program provides an eye exam and free glasses if needed for kindergarten age children. 25% of kids begin first grade with an undiagnosed eye problem. To book your child's eye exam, please visit optometrist.ab.ca. The Alberta Association of Optometrists represents almost 800 doctors of optometry in over 80 communities across the province. Members are highly trained, regulated health professionals who provide primary eye health and vision care to Albertans. Learn more at optometrists.ab.ca. Welcome to season two. Season two. two. (laughs) We all had jazz hands just because everyone didn't get to enjoy that like we did. We all went, imagine. "Ah, Imagine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Three kitchens are still here. We're still here. There's no end to what we can talk about (laughs) with food this season. Mm -hmm. We've got some great recipes coming up that you can bring into your home. Um, And we're doing some new things too yeah lots of new things actually hey yeah. i'm mm-hmm. excited about the season because yeah. the yeah. first one well the first episode this episode um was very encouraging we're having some success we're eating some good food mm-hmm. yeah and we're going to be talking about some figures in cooking as well not just food yeah and we're starting our season two with a fall feast yes oh yeah yeah like a really good one. And an interesting one. Something we've never done before. We've been talking for a while about doing an episode with Indigenous cooking. Yes, because we've done so much from so many different cultures around the world. Mm-hmm. We thought it's time to look right here at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And it feels fitting when we're talking about fall and fall feast and Thanksgiving season coming up and the harvest and all of that because... Kind of the, I guess, the thinking behind Indigenous cooking is from the land, using what you've got, what's close by, what you can gather. Um, And so we've tried to do that with this meal. Mm -hmm. It turned out amazing. So there you go. It's Yeah, we got to do some new foods, use some new ingredients that we've never, never cooked with before or eaten. And so here we go. Heather, you found a great book in the library. Yeah. Real treasure, actually. Yeah, it's, I actually went on a f- Calgary, oh, I can't remember the exact name of it now. It's like Calgary Home Cooking Facebook group that I follow. Mm-hmm. And I posted on there and I said, this is what we're thinking of doing. Does anybody have any good cookbooks or websites to, to refer us to for Indigenous, local Indigenous cooking? Mm-hmm. Yeah, And somebody responded and said, have you checked out? Shane Chartrand's book to wow Mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying that right and so I went to the library and picked it up and here we go okay so you know when we started this idea I I was a little okay I don't know about you guys but I was a little worried about what exactly we were going to be cooking because it's not like I don't like game meat or anything like that but that's usually cooked for me I've never done that at home myself Mm-hmm. And then you brought this book to the playground to to a meeting. Let's call it a meeting. <laughs> it's a meeting. I think it took Sarah all of like 10 seconds to say, I'm making this. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it, it was just the time when the air was starting to get that chill, right? That fall chill. And I look through the book and I'm like, oh, my God, this is like such yeah. a great cookbook. And I knew you were going to pick that because (laughs) as soon as I saw it, when I first got the book, I was like, oh, 
Sarah's totally going to want to make this one. Yeah. And I'm so glad too. Let's hear about it. Tell us, Sarah. Okay. First, 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 let's talk about the drink first. I'm making two things. I'm making a drink to, to uh, greet the guests with, which is you guys. <laughs> and it's called an iced Labrador tea. And it's Labrador tea leaves that grow in bogs and wetland areas. Supposed to be really good <laughs> for your health. I have no idea what this is going to taste like. I don't even know what it's going to really look like. I ordered it on Etsy from Eastern mm. Canada. It's probably going to show up in the next couple of days and then I'll know what it, the tea leaves look like. What you do is you steep this tea in boiling water for five minutes and not longer than that. And there's a reason for that. Oh. And then you make this really delicious syrup with honey and water and lemon and mint and rosemary and a cinnamon stick. Mm. You add the syrup into this tea and you serve it cold, it looks like. I think you can have it warm, but you serve it cold. And the reason why you don't want to steep it for more than five minutes is that even though it's extremely good for you, and in this book it says it's very high in vitamin C and it's good for colds, perfect season, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's steeped for too long or you have too much, it can be toxic. Ta-da! <laughs> So what kind of toxic? Yeah, like it can't be worse than a whole lot of other stuff that we, yeah. That yeah. we ingest. Or That's right. Or, so, yeah. you know, what? like, I mean, we're not going to have a lot of it. I just ordered a little bit, a few, a few tea leaves. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited about this, this particular tea, because if you looked through the book, for sure, I would never call this book fusion, but he definitely brings in ingredients from outside of Canada to help his recipes out. Mm -hmm. It's definitely indigenous cuisine. However, mm -hmm. with this iced Labrador tea, what I was really taken with was that the Labrador tea leaves are native to Canada. I think it's more Eastern Canada. This is what was grown here and this was what was ingested. So that's really exciting. I don't know anything about this. Mm -hmm. mm. So I thought that was very Canadian. My exciting recipe that I'm going to do is called bone marrow with smoked cheese, rye toast, and a tomato cucumber tartare. Oh, it sounds so good. <sighs> Just the name alone and the photo was, there's some beautiful oh, photos in this book mm, too. And we should yeah. probably mention he is an, uh, a co-author. Jennifer Cockrell King. That's right. Yeah. And... Together, the two of them have come up with some amazing job, guys. Yeah. food and photos and stories and, and yeah. a recipe book that is quite amazing. So bone marrow. So have you guys had bone marrow before? I have once, but it has been such a long time. I really couldn't tell you anything about it. I had it once as well with you, Sarah. We were out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Chinese restaurant, actually. Yeah. Following the, the matinee at the theater. I think That's we went right. there. So I'd had it just once, but it was really delicious. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious about this recipe. So it reminds me a lot of like, a, like a butter spread or a nice fatty spread that you put on. I like to put it on rice personally, but you know, this mm. is the first time I'm going to put it on toast. When you go to the butcher and thanks Master Meats for coming through for us again. <laughs> you just go and you tell your butcher that you want bone marrow cut in a boat cut. So it's oh. cut. Okay. Horizontally. Like lengthwise, right? Lengthwise, yeah. Put it in the freezer and you use it whenever you want. I think it keeps for a long time in the freezer. And so you just take it out of the freezer. In this case, um, he talks about putting some smoked Swiss cheese on top, some mm. salt to taste. And then you put it in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but not for too long, guys. Like you don't want to do this for too long or that bone marrow will actually liquefy oh. and you don't want that to happen. So you want it to cook right to the point where it is set, but oh. cooked. If that Interesting. makes any sense. Is there a, temp do you use a thermometer? Is there a temperature you're going for or? Um, no. So he's saying it's about 10 to 15 minutes, but what you want to do is you will start seeing the marrow bubbling slightly close to the bone hmm. and it'll be kind of pink in the middle and that's where you stop it. So that that's a so good interesting. Yeah. I would never, this is not the kind of thing I would ever think that you would make at home. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess because you have to go to the butcher and get it specially. You have to mm -hmm. request it special. It's not sitting in the grocery store. You know, right. it's not something we typically make. So this no. is really cool. And the Master Meats butcher was extremely excited. 
when oh. I bought the boat because he usually sells it to restaurants so he's like what are you doing and this is how you do it and he gave some tips it's like you know 425 oh, really quick just from the freezer to the oven you're good to go kind of deal and I'm like okay that's awesome I love that the butcher has like cooking recommendations as well he's not just cutting the meat and he knows yeah. how to prepare it I like that I love master meats it's great when we got the skirt steak from them I went and yeah. picked it up and and uh, he was asking what we were doing and little cooking tips yeah they're great there <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally and then you serve this with rye bread which is buttered which I found really funny because I'm like okay so he wants us to put butter on it and then bone marrow on it so it's like fat and fat and I'm like my you're hero. speaking Sarah's language <laughs> yes, I was like so happy. I'm like anything with butter and fat. And then I love this tartar. It's like tomato, cucumber, red onion, mm. green onion, garlic. So you can see how some of these ingredients are coming in from outside of Canada, right? Mm -hmm. So he's putting it all together. Uh, parsley, olive oil, red wine vinegar and salt. And so it's like a little salad or relish, I guess. Sounds kind of like a like a bruschetta. Yeah, that's exactly it. And so something really acidic to put on with the fat. Doesn't that sound mm, just, yeah. it pairs perfectly, right? Yeah, just to cut through the fat and really like pop that flavor. From yeah. Mm. So that's what I'm making. I'm so excited. No kidding. I'm so excited I get to eat this. <laughs> Me too. And I should have some red tomatoes for you for Ooh. your... I bet I'll have some. What else was in there? I... Cucumbers and onion and... Onion and garlic and parsley. See, we got garlic from the garden. We got, we could do tomatoes. Okay. I don't have cucumbers for you, but we can get them from a local place. We're going to try to do as much local as we can. Here. Nice, we nice, might nice. have a cucumber. We'll see what's Ooh. still Ooh. hanging on. My cucumbers were kind of a fail this year because oh. it was too hot for them in the greenhouse. Right. And so oh, interesting. we've had a few yeah. and there's one more growing right now. So let mm. me see where it's at. <laughs> let me see awesome. if it's big enough. Fun. I just have to shop at at, at your gardens instead of going anywhere. There you go. There you go. Yep. Yeah. And so I ended up getting five bone marrows cut lengthwise. So I have 10. I'm, I'm not going to serve 10 because that's too fatty. But I'm really excited to start this because I think once I do this and if this is successful, I think I'll continue to make bone marrow once in a while. Mm. Yeah. Something fancy like a Christmas dinner or something like that, right? Yeah, so uh, we'll uh, take pictures and show you what it looks like. Because, I mean, the picture in this book, oh, my God. Delicious. I can't wait. These flavors. Oh, so good. Making me crazy. What is going to go with the bone marrow and Labrador tea? So when I got a chance, when the cookbook was passed down to me, I loved the way that it was put together, I wanted to say. I love mm -hmm. that it's organized by season. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... So I flipped right to the fall right away because we're doing fall cooking. And I was really excited. It took me about five minutes again to choose the recipe because as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to make it. It is a honey brined roast pheasant with acorn squash and fresh sage. Oh my God, that's yum. yum. Again, it, like you just read it and you're like, oh, yeah, yes. I've never even eaten pheasant and I'm like, I know, I'm so excited meal. about it pheasant. It sounds so good. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about a different type of poultry. I think that's going to be really interesting to cook with. This is what I, I wanted to make this and I thought, well, I wonder if I can find pheasant in Calgary. And I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. So I thought, well, worst case scenario, I'll make it with chicken. But after a little bit of Heather's Googling... <laughs> She found a business in Calgary called Rocky Mountain Game Meats. They provide a wide variety of um, local fresh and frozen game meats to restaurants in Calgary. And they also have a walk-in option to buy. Mm. I was really glad that I was able to take advantage of that. I contacted them. They have these pheasants frozen and ready to go. They're always fresh because they provide them to restaurants frequently. Nice. And they've been really friendly and easy to work with. And they were also very excited about why are you cooking a pheasant? And is this a special? Like if it's a restaurant, I get it, but it's at yeah. home. Yeah. Oh, is this a special occasion or something? And yes, it is. We, we do special occasions every week. Exactly. Kitchen's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> did our little self-promotion plug there and uh 
and and then they brought me out this cute little bird no I think it's 900 grams (laughs) it's just this little guy anyway they said it might have the head on it is headless it looks just like a chicken oh yeah Right. But uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I was like, oh, if the head was on, that would be kind of fun. To- <laughs> that would have been fun. I would have <laughs> do something that. for the presentation with that. It would have been interesting. Anyway, so this little pheasant is going to get brined in water, salt, honey, garlic, peppercorn, lemon brine. Oh, oh my God. God. Everything sounds good. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> it sounds amazing. I'm so hungry right now. And then we are going to stuff it with sprigs of fresh thyme, rosemary, and sage, and salt and pepper on the skin. And then we're going to roast it. So I'm a little unsure about how this roasting is going to go because it's so tiny. Right. I only recently started cooking birds. Like most of my life, my husband always cooked the turkey. Like Mm -hmm. the first year we cooked a turkey was after we had kids and he bought this oh my god guys absolutely massive mr bean sized turkey <laughs> mr bean sized oh my turkey. god he gets his head stuck in it <laughs> i'm telling you we it didn't even fit in the roasting pan we had oh, so no. i had to send my mom home to go get me a roasting pan because the roasting pan we bought did that he took the turkey out of the freezer and put it in the fridge and I was like the hell is that thing anyway it took us so much longer to cook than he thought it would right we didn't eat and dinner was late oh my god it was (laughs) and it was this gigantic bird like we just couldn't stop laughing at the size of like it wasn't even on the chart of my cooking chart it was so big Mm. I think we've all had those turkey dinner stories the first few times you're like yeah Yeah. okay when you think it's going to be a couple hours and it ends up being an all day yeah roast yeah Yeah. mistakes to learn from right yeah. Okay, so how long does a pheasant take? What does it say about the pheasant? Okay, so you're going to heat up the oven to four, then you're going to reduce it to 350. Mm-hmm. And it says it roasts for 30 to 40 minutes, and that both should be done at the same time. Mm, okay. Uh, you should leave the pheasant to rest for 10 minutes and then carve it. And you can serve it on a bed of fresh kale. And I just happen to have some fresh kale in my garden. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. I I don't know if I'll be able to recreate the beautiful picture he has in the book, but (laughs) but we'll try that. And as for the squash, it is really just salt, pepper, rubbed sage and oil. Oh, okay. You brought up sage. Yeah. Is sage more of an herb that is used in the East part of Canada than in around Alberta? Because I find that everyone in the East talks about sage, but I don't see a lot of sage recipes here in Alberta. Am I wrong? I have no idea. I I don't know. Did you grow up with sage in your like turkeys and stuff like that? You did. It's a poultry seasoning for sure in my... Like I don't hear about the usage of sage as much here than I hear like from Eastern Canada, like every sage, sage, sage and everything, basically. (laughs) Like those big sort of holiday meals. That's what is one of the main ingredients, right? Interesting. There's always been sage in the stuffing that my family has made at any Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, but I can't think of it anywhere else. And my mother-in-law ate so much sage growing up, she doesn't like sage anymore. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> my uh, my husband's grandfather told a story to us about hunting sage grouse and eating it. Mm. And he will never eat anything with sage in it again because that damn grouse was like, like just the smell of cooking it. Does it eat sage? Is that why it's called a sage grouse? Oh, it eats sage. I see. So it was like infused, over saged <laughs> bird. And <laughs> yeah. he was like, oh no. Look at that. It comes seasoned. Isn't that why people don't eat koala, other than the fact that they're so cute? But isn't that the reason they don't eat koala is because they eat a lot of eucalyptus. And so they're apparently they taste 
disgusting. Like the spa? They do- <laughs> taste like a steam shower? <laughs> they taste like a bubble bath. <laughs> but 10 times stronger. Oh, that's funny. That's yeah. a nice natural deterrent. Natural right? deterrent. Nobody's going to yeah. eat me because I taste like a... And their cute know. face, of course. And aren't they of like course. high all the time? Yeah, I think so. Why they look so sleepy? That's why they sit in trees and do nothing. It's because they're like, oh, man. Because of the eucalyptus? Does eucalyptus make you high? I don't know. I thought it was intoxicating. Well, let's see if we feel after the Labrador tea. You might be laughing a little <laughs> As long as I'm not laughing all the way to the bathroom. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> what does toxic mean? Exactly? Is it Maybe yeah, it's good toxic. toxic. Maybe yeah. it just means... What if it's like yeah. a cleanse toxic? Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> Drink a little bit of it and see how it yeah. is. Exactly. <sighs> I am also super lucky that I found some sage plants this year to put in my garden. And so I will have some fresh sage. And I have to say, I've, I've been drying some throughout the summer and cooking with it fresh. Mm. And wow, nothing compares to the like real deal. Like the bottled mm-hmm. stuff, just the fresh stuff is amazing. I, I find I, that with bay leaves too, like the fresher they are, oh, they're mm-hmm. so different in taste. So different. The stuff, yeah. So Heather, this comes to you now. To me. The complete circle. The, the circle. So the trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, we've, ha- we've been talking about protein and when, I knew that Sarah was going to do the marrow. And then when Aaron was like, Ooh, pheasant. Then I thought, okay, now we need like a side and some kind of vegetable. And of course, those things, those things call vegetables. <laughs> yeah. Those things, you know, we should probably have some, one of those vegetable things. And also the thing that I think comes to mind, if not first, then one of the first things you think of when you think of indigenous food is panic. Ah, mm-hmm. yes. And I don't know if I've ever known quite this much about Bannock until doing a bit of reading about it. So, I mean, we know it was not originated here. It's a unleavened bread that came from Europe with Mm -hmm. fur traders and explorers and settlers. And they shared that with the, with the native people here. And it became kind of a thing where I believe across the country, across North America, okay, different groups will have different ways of making it different words for it. What Shane Chartrand has put in his book is called a galette, which is the Métis version Hmm. of bannock. And I've never seen it made this way. When I was a kid, my mom used to make the bannock dough. We'd put it on the end of a stick and cook it over the fire when we were camping. Hmm. And then you'd kind of take it off, put jam on it. It was like a biscuit. So good. And I've had it made in a frying pan Mm -hmm. over the fire or on the stove, but I've never made it like this. So I thought this would be a great thing to try. Okay. So the way he describes it is a dense crumb. And this recipe is his dad's recipe. The name of the recipe is galette with roasted garlic two ways. So if we needed an excuse to eat more garlic, here it comes because who doesn't love roasted garlic? Okay. So so for the galette, you've got flour, baking powder, salt, milk, and canola oil and fleur de sel for finishing. Is there a reason why it has to be canola oil? Is that just because it's very abundant? I'm going to guess because it is, but I don't actually know. Might be the, it's a very neutral flavor could be. I would imagine any sort of neutral oil would be fine. You want the oven at 300, uh, line a baking Mm -hmm. sheet with parchment In the stand mixer with a dough hook attachment, you're going to do your flour, baking powder, salt, and oil, then add the milk and Mm -hmm. mix until just a shaggy dough has formed. Put it on your work surface, knead it a few times to bring it together, and it should still be shaggy. I love the way cookbooks are written with these descriptions where I'm like, I "I don't really know. Remember the sand ribbons with the macarons? And now we're talking like shaggy dough. Like, ah. Communicating something physical, though, can be so hard to do until you've experienced it. Right? Yes. Communicating anything like that uses a different sense, yeah. right? Like taste, Feel. smell, yeah, and touch. And yeah. then you and then yeah, you and you're trying it. to kind of use one word to describe this dough. It's like, well, shaggy sounds right. good, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay. Then we're gonna shape shape this shaggy dough into a log. 
And I added that to the description. It just says shape the dough into a log. Place on the prepared baking sheet, flatten the top. Use your fingers to press little divots into the dough, which reminds me of focaccia. Focaccia. Yeah, exactly. That picture looks like a focaccia, actually. It does have a very, yeah, similar Mm -hmm. look to it. And then you're going to do egg and milk um, for an egg wash over the dough. Bake it for about 40 minutes until the top begins to turn golden brown. Take it out, let it cool for 10 minutes, and there you go. And then you're going to, you know, serve it with this lovely roasted garlic two ways. We're going to roast garlic the way you think, you know, you typically roast garlic where you kind of slice the top off, put oil on it, wrap it in foil, Mm. roast it in the oven until it's very soft. So then you can just sort of scoop it. Oh, it becomes like butter that way. Oh, I love it like that. Mm -hmm. And then the second way that he does it is... We've got cloves, oil, salt, and pepper. You're going to, again, put it in foil, seal the packet, roast it in the preheated oven for 30 minutes. So it doesn't roast as long. Okay. And then you're going to puree it in like a blender or with an immersion blender or something. So it's going to, it's going to be an actual spread. With salt? Yep. Salt and pepper. That is our galette with roasted garlic two ways. Can't go wrong. I'm thinking like... (laughs) This just all sounds yum. Yeah, no kidding. The other side dish I'm going to make is called a warm pumpkin salad with toasted pumpkin seeds and seared cucumber. Any reactions? Okay, that sounds delicious. Oh, I really Any- like that. Has anyone else ever seared a cucumber? Because I'm not. No. Okay, didn't we come across something about cooking cucumber recently? I think we were talking about cooking lettuce. Oh, yeah. Both of us have charred lettuce, lettuce on the lettuce. barbecue. Mm. And it it's not something right. you would typically think yeah. to do on the barbecue. But then once you do, you're like, no. wow, I'm never going back. So I'm really interested to see how this goes with the cucumber. Ooh. Me too. And I mean, what speaks to fall more than a pumpkin, right? Oh, <laughs> there's nothing better. Mm. Nothing better. It's like the symbol of fall is the big old pumpkin. Yeah. So I actually got a pumpkin from my sister who got it from her in-law's farm uh, east of Red Deer. So so I have this beautiful pumpkin straight from the Thompson's farm. Okay. Farm to family, to family, to table, to friends. That's how ah. it's going to go. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do with the pumpkin is uh, place it whole on a baking sheet and cook until it's soft and slightly caramelized. It's about an hour to cook a pumpkin whole. Oh, how big is this pumpkin? So this, the recipe calls for a medium pumpkin, about eight pounds. And I believe mine is seven pounds. So it's... That's a good size. It's not huge. It's not jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. It's pie pumpkin. Yeah, because they have thicker walls, right? So that you get more flesh. It's heavy. Less hollow. Yeah, that seven pounds is like... It's a dense pumpkin, Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we're going to roast it. When it's cool enough to handle, peel away the rind uh, from the flesh, discard the strings, but reserve the seeds, and then cut it into cubes. Okay. It says with toasted pumpkin seeds, so I'm going to toast pumpkin seeds. Do you season the pumpkin seeds? It's just toasted on a skillet until they pop slightly. They're fully toasted. And then you're going to whisk together oil, garlic, shallot, Honey, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. This is sounding a lot like the the brine. Yeah, that's what it's. This similar. is going to pair perfectly with that pheasant. As you said those things, I'm just like, mm, mm, mm. I know. Okay, and then uh, so you toss that. That's your dressing. You toss your pumpkins in, and then you put your toasted pumpkin seeds on top. Some chopped parsley and warm cucumber slices. Mm. Are we using the salted lemons in this? I, when you mentioned your lemon and salt, I was like, well, of course you're going to use salted lemons. Okay. I just, <laughs> I mean, it seems <laughs> obvious it? to me, but <laughs> if you haven't listened to anything in season one before, you might not be aware of the uh, obsession <laughs> that we've created. I'm actually out of salted salt. lemons. It's like, oh. I don't know what to do. I have an emptiness in my life and fridge. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, so the last thing in this recipe is to put the seared cucumber on there. And you're just cooking the cucumber until golden brown around the edges and in the middle, about five minutes per side, a sliced English cucumber. So yeah, there you go. Sounds like how you cook a zucchini. Yeah. Yeah, just kind yeah. of saute it a little bit. That's that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I think that's going to really, oh, I'm excited about seeing what that flavor is going to be like. Yeah. 
And I'm just glad that it's like garlic, garlic, uh, garlic, garlic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is going to be I mean, an amazing meal. I am really excited about this meal. And I really didn't expect to be this excited about this meal. I think that his cookbook is something that people should look up and borrow or buy. I, I think you wouldn't be disappointed. It is surprisingly simple. Yeah. Is that surprising? Like, I would have thought that when we talked about Indigenous cooking, I I expected simple. In fact, I expected almost so simple that where is the flavor coming from? Right. Aside from, like, the protein or something. Right. Because so, I think, like, you're talking about garlic, yay, garlic. Well, that wasn't traditionally here, I don't think, right? Yeah. But I think what I mean by simple was that I I didn't know how these recipes that seemed very foreign to what I usually cook in the house was going to translate in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they really do translate. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the use of other ingredients, but being able to keep that indigenous identity, I think Mm -hmm. is very smart how he did it. And I would say like part of the reason why we weren't exactly sure what to expect is Mm -hmm. because we don't have a lot of exposure to it we don't yeah no it's gonna be really cool to get a chance to experience some of these flavors and um I just love the simplicity of it Mm -hmm. I think it's really nice I I feel like we're going into this kind of understanding what we're going to be eating or tasting I am really curious about the pheasant because I've never had pheasant but I've had Cornish hen I've had quail so I'm thinking it'll be something similar to that so yeah this is very exciting I'm I'm really looking forward to this I'm really looking forward to kicking off fall. September is always a lot of family time for us. We have family and friends who have birthdays yeah. in the fall. Sarah shares a birthday with my husband. Mm-hmm. You know, we're born on the best day ever. For us, we always have um, my husband's birthdays at Thanksgiving. Yes. And so Thanksgiving is also a birthday thing for us. He's, he says it's the best time to have a birthday because you get a big dinner and he loves like turkey dinner and all the trimmings and all that stuff Mm -hmm. pie is like secondary because we usually have cake we usually have birthday cake yeah so all of that is like it's a lot of celebration around this Mm -hmm. time that's fun yeah I like having that family time and that togetherness and there's always such good memories at this time of year Mm -hmm. and pairing those great memories with food and with the change in season like it all just feels so nice and warm and fuzzy and no, there is something comforting about fall for sure. The food, absolutely. Sweater weather, baby. The sweater weather. <laughs> Aaron's favorite. You know, if the next season wasn't winter, I would love fall so much more. Yes, I agree. Have we decided if we are making a dessert or buying one? <laughs> I think we should have dessert. I have like a pumpkin full of Saskatoon berries that we picked. Whoa, did whoa. you say did you say you have you just... a pumpkin full oh. of Saskatoon <laughs> berries? <laughs> Yes, I think I did. You did. (laughs) Okay, scratch. Um, I have a freezer full of Saskatoon berries. In fact, I've also got hascabs and gooseberries. I Mm. got like all the berries. She's got all the berries. All the berries. I got all (laughs) the berries. A pie or like a, I don't know, a rustic like tart or something simple. Maybe Mm -hmm. we could do. Let's kick off fall. Let's kick off fall. I think this is a great way of doing it. Yeah. And season two. And season two. Woo! (laughs) And and we're still all friends and coworkers. (laughs) We still (laughs) talk to each other. That's hilarious. (laughs) What did you think was going to happen? Now I'm like, wait a second. (laughs) This episode of Three Kitchens is brought to you by Yeg Podfest, presented by Edmonton Community Foundation, in partnership with the Alberta Podcast Network and LitFest, Canada's nonfiction festival. Running October 1st through 3rd, Yeg Podfest will be held all online this year, so anyone can tune in to experience it. Events include masterclasses with professional podcasters, panel discussions, feature interviews, and more. Some of APN's member shows will be there too. So join us for the virtual party from October 1st through 3rd. To check out the full lineup and get tickets, head to yegpodfest.ca. That's Y-E-G podfest.ca. Here we are. We're back. (sighs) After our fall feast. It was a feast. What a feast. (laughs) 
Oh, what a feast. What a <laughs> feast. Okay. I was sick in bed. And so I called it my gourmet hospital food because my husband brought it in on our little like table tray and it was all these little tin foiled packages. <laughs> but this time it was like the best food you have ever, ever eaten. In a hospital. You better clarify. Oh. It may not be the best food you've ever eaten in your whole no. life. It was the best food I had. It ever was eaten. good food. It was. It was. I didn't say it wasn't good. It, it was. I don't up know if there. I'd say it was the best of my life, but it was definitely really good. It, it was, was definitely the best sure. present I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> I can say <laughs> that. Too. I can say that for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we could start right with the pheasant. So I have to give all the pheasant credit to Heather. I I sent my little bird off to her. <laughs> the little bird. And I, t- I wanted some moral support with the bird. So I took it over to Sarah's house while our kids were running circles and they went out to the park. Mm-hmm. We had a glass. Actually, we had two drinks going at once. We, yes, had- that's right. <laughs> we had a vodka and then we poured a glass of wine and then we cooked the pheasant. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the wine that we had? Oh, right. Yeah, we had a bottle of Merlot from the Inca Meep Cellars in the Okanagan, which is North America's first Indigenous owned and operated winery. Mm -hmm. And it's very tasty. Yeah, very tasty. I really enjoyed it. And uh, that was recommended in the Tawau book, right? He didn't recommend the Merlot. He used uh, another vintage, like another grape for a dessert, a wine poached pear or something. Oh, that's right. But he had recommended the winery and it was a good call. It was yeah. very tasty. So this pheasant was brined. That was so tasty. And when I made the brine, like you cook it on the stove, you boil it and then you let it cool and then you put the bird in it. Yes. And then you put it in the fridge. And while that brine was bubbling away on my stove, my house smelled amazing. And my oh. husband came in and said, what are we, what are we eating? What is that? I'm like, well, sorry, it's not for you, but <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Oh, the best. Like I would absolutely use that brine. Next time I make the chicken, Sarah said she was going to use it at Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Like it is tasty. My husband also, he snuck little bits of everything mm. that came over and he was like, what is in this chicken? And I was like, no, 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 that's the little pheasant. And he was like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. He couldn't get over the flavor. He's like, you got to do that on a chicken sometime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was really tasty. And Sarah did the carving of the bird. And what did you say about it? Well, so then I carved up portions for you guys and and you dropped it off at Aaron's. And so then my husband and I like sort of picked away at the carcass and all of a sudden this liver pops out and I'm like, ah! (laughs) So yes, when you get a game bird, always look inside the cavity to make sure that the organs have been removed. (laughs) And I, yes, I neglected to do that. And it's so tiny. Like you, you, I don't even think I could have put my hand inside to like get it was such a tiny little bird it was a tiny little liver but it scared the crap out of me (laughs) popped up like what is that and and there was a neck in there too yeah but strangely enough not any other organ so I have no idea what that was all about anyway it's a good lesson just check yes check the camera Remember to check (laughs) <laughs> and you also, when you were carving it, said that it was tough, like not tough meat, but tougher to pull apart than a chicken. Tougher than a chicken, for sure. Um, but not tough. You're right. Yeah, like it yeah. was easy to eat, but still definitely chewier than a chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely yeah. had a different texture to it. And it wasn't that gamey, right? I mean, I think no. I wonder if that's the brine. Yeah, that God, I don't know. Hmm. Otherwise, it tasted like I thought it tasted. Maybe like it tastes like chicken. Yeah but the texture is not. And I can I say that I loved all of the squashes? Mm-hmm. Mm. It was good. Heather, yeah. your pumpkin salad. That was really good. My husband was loved that too. So good. It's the dressing. It was so good. The, the dressing was just <laughs> fantastic on that. And I loved those yeah. cucumbers. Yeah, who knew? Sautéing cucumbers. It Delicious. turned it into what I thought it seemed like a tender zucchini. Yeah. It, like it seemed more like a zucchini after it was sautéed like that. Like Right. It was so much sweeter than a zucchini, if you ask me. Oh, sweeter than a zucchini, yes. Yeah. yeah. But I thought it turned it savory almost, like a more savory taste to the cucumber. 
I don't know. It was good though. It I re- good. really wondered about those when I put them in the pan. I was like, here we go. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they were really good when I re sauteed that to heat it up the next day, too. Mm. Me too. I warmed it up in a pan too, and I put a poached egg on top, and that was mm. my breakfast. It was tasty. I've never eaten pumpkin like that. I think I've only ever had it like pureed in soup or baking or a pie. Like I've never eaten a roasted a pumpkin and eaten yeah. it like that. No. Yeah. It was so, and, and it looked really nice. Yeah. And it was good cold too. You could eat it warm or cold. It was yeah, super tasty. I would have toasted the pumpkin seeds for longer. Yeah. They were that would be hard. my only criticism of it is I felt like the pumpkin seeds seemed kind of raw-ish still Mm. yeah and I think it's because in the recipe you you're just toasting them on a dry pan on the stove yeah Mm -hmm. whereas if you if we'd done them like we usually do for snacking after Halloween where you put them in the oven and leave them a long time at a low temperature and put salt on them and do that yeah Mm -hmm. I think that would have been better that little crunch Mm -hmm. yeah the The crunch I would have toasted the pumpkin seeds and in a different fashion but I yeah yeah still tasty and the bone marrow (sighs) god (sighs) That was just Can we have a moment of silence for <laughs> I think the we bone are having marrow? A moment of, we're having a memory <sighs> of the bone marrow. That was so delicious. When I bought the bone marrow, I told you I bought five bone marrows and I got it split lengthwise, right? And so we made one for each of us. And I, I don't think it's enough. Anyway, there are more soaking in my fridge right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm having bone marrow tomorrow. I don't care. It's so good. I think you did a great job cooking it too. Like you described mm-hmm. all these different stages or whatever could right. go wrong. And like, as soon as I dug my knife and then my spoon in. It was like butter. It was yeah. perfect. Like, I had to share mine with my kids. Because they were like, what's that? I want to try it. And they loved it. And then they wanted to eat the whole thing. I think a lot of, another part of it was the cheese though. That smoky cheese on there yeah. was like, mm. And was great on bread. Mm-hmm. Yes. Buttered bread. <laughs> butter. Yeah. Butter on top of that. Oh my God. It was such yeah. a winner. It's like yeah. fat and fat and fat. And, and that carbs. was a yeah. delicious bread that you got too. Did you get that? So I got the bread from Edelweiss. Okay. Nice. And it yeah. was a light rye. The bread was really good. I called uh, Springbank Cheese, which is Ooh. across the street from my house. I've lived in this house for how many years? And I've never <laughs> walked into that store. They're extremely nice. But I called them in advance to find out if they had a smoked Swiss. They didn't, but they recommended a smoked Rolone cheese. And so that's what I ended up getting. And uh, the one other thing that I did that was a little different from what the recipe called for is that when I had read about cooking bone marrow, a lot of people said to soak it in salt and water for 12 to 24 hours to get rid of the impurities and the blood. Mm-hmm. And so I did that. And you have to sort of change the water out every four hours. Oh. Huh. And then you dry out the, the bone marrow. And it cooked up for 15 minutes exactly. It was perfect right Mm -hmm. and a way to know it is that when we looked into the oven um, you could see sort of the grease kind of starting to fall onto the the bottom of the tray Uh, and so we we took it out and we used a a toothpick to kind of see if it would detach from the bone and it just sort of detached really easy and that's like your indicator that it's done it's good to go very cool who would ever think cooking bone marrow at home like it just seems like one of those fancy things you eat at a restaurant but now we any of us can go make it just go to the butcher ask for the bone marrow get it cut lengthwise near and they're called boat cuts yeah and they're cheap so Hmm. (laughs) cool and and then the tea oh the tea the toxic tea I was so nervous you got me so worked up about that the first time you said oh apparently it's toxic I was like meh who cares But by the time I had it in my hand, I was like nervous to drink it. It's toxic if you drink a lot of it. And it's toxic if you steep it for too long. So what you do is you bring the leaves to a boil and then you turn it down to a simmer for five minutes. And trust me, I had the timer on (laughs) because apparently you don't want to simmer it for too long or it's toxic. I'm like, oh, I don't want to poison my friends. Who will I host this show with? (laughs) You'd be on your own. (laughs) three kitchens has turned to one 
<laughs> one kitchen and, and the other two are out <laughs> two friends who drank too much toxic tea the tea in itself yeah it was good and I'm glad we tried it but it was the syrup that was wow amazing what was in that syrup so it was half water half honey with mint rosemary and a cinnamon stick Ooh, that syrup needs to be made again yeah I don't know what it was with that drink but yeah it was the most tasty thing I have yeah. had and I I didn't drink all of it because I was so nervous but I had <laughs> maybe half of it I'm in the same boat it's okay Heather and I was I also cl- <laughs> you were nervous <laughs> yeah. and then I closed it and then later I put it in the fridge because I'm like maybe I'll drink it I don't know and I took it out and I just smelled it like I yeah. just <laughs> It was like I was inhaling it. It was, it smells amazing. It's like, oh, so good. I didn't know it was the syrup that was like that yummy. It, yummy that thing. was the syrup. I think that was the yum part. So, you know what? Just make tea and yeah. make that syrup. I think because it was a cold tea, mm-hmm. like you could drink it cold and it was extremely delicious. Mm-hmm. I think if you wanted to make your own homemade iced tea in the summer, yes. yeah. this would just blow it out of the park like this totally. would be the best tasty beverage to have with any tea that you like like any tea exactly yeah yeah I'm totally making so it that. was a quarter cup of the syrup to about one and a half cups of tea so just so you know whatever tea you want to make do that and then you don't have to worry about the toxicity or whatever <laughs> you can just go crazy with the tea yeah it was delicious yeah. Yeah. the thing we haven't gotten to yet is your shaggy bread shaggy bread galette galette yes not my favorite what did you guys think of this spread it was okay like I, I'm, I'm willing to say I didn't really like it all that I much. thought it was too salty yes I thought yes. something was too salty it about was it. way too yes. salty even my family tried it and my kids were like whoa there's too much salt in this and they like mm-hmm. put the piece back yeah so did mine <laughs> and I you know I'm I love salty like mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite. I I love salty stuff. Mm-hmm. I usually oversalt things in other people's opinion, but I like okay. it salty. Right. But even I thought this was too salty. So was it the bread that was salty or that uh-huh. garlic? It was puree? the bread. It was definitely the bread. <laughs> yeah. It has two tablespoons of salt in the dough. And how much flour? Oh, six cups. Mm. No. I mean, you guys had a third of it each and that huh. is a giant piece of bread. So I didn't think that two tablespoons sounded crazy. Yeah, doesn't. but it was too salty. Oh, it does sound like a lot of salt. Because for four cups, I put one tablespoon. Oh, one teaspoon. Sorry. Yeah, I put one teaspoon. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say that's so it is super duper salty because mm-hmm. yeah, I make a four cup pizza dough. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure I put in just a teaspoon. My son loved it. Oh, like he would not. (laughs) Can I have another piece? Can I have another piece? Can I have another piece? I'm like, (laughs) really? Okay. And he loved that garlic puree. Mm. He loved it. So let's talk about that puree because that was good. And I'm going to make that again. (laughs) So the puree is just super simple. A cup of garlic cloves peeled two tablespoons of olive oil and salt and pepper to taste. Mm. I didn't put very much of, I think I put more pepper, not very much salt. Cause I was already thinking we got salt going on here. So because you've peeled them, you're not roasting the garlic as a whole, like right. the other method of roasting garlic. So you've peeled them, tossed them in the oil and the salt and pepper, you put it in foil and you, let's see at 325 for about 30 minutes. Okay. And then right. you want to blend them up whichever right. way you do immersion blender, or I had a ninja yep. smoothie thing mm-hmm. and I just put them in there and it was so tasty spread on the bread. Yeah. I ended up putting it with my rye bread oh, because yeah. I wasn't crazy about the That's what bannock, I did. So. <laughs> <laughs> put the marrow and the puree and the butter and the, and and then the marrow came with um a little sort of a what do, what would you call that like a salsa kind of yeah like a fresh treat cucumber tomato some Onion. herbs yeah and it almost cut that fat yeah it was so good oh mm-hmm. yeah all of it together was yeah all those flavors were really great in there yeah. and mm-hmm. then you made that wonderful saskatoon crumble he did made you a little sweet for the end I had no room for that at the end I think I took one bite of it and was like oh this is delicious put it back in the fridge and then I had it the next day for lunch nice 
that was delicious. Nice, nice, nice. I didn't even really get any because I didn't want it then. And then by the time I decided yesterday I might have some, it was all gone. My family had Aww. eaten all of it. Yeah, my kids <laughs> ate all of ours. I, yeah. I had one bite, unfortunately. So all in all, my conclusion, this cookbook, it's easier than you would think. Like the recipes are pretty simple. Yeah. They're easy to make at home and they're freaking tasty. Yeah, really accessible. So delicious. Yes. And if you want to kind of follow in the spirit of indigenous food and cooking, try to get as much as you can locally. We have a whole list. We, we can put it on social media. We can link to everybody that we can on there. We use two different honeys from local producers. We had meat, we had cheese, we had wine, we had like everything Bread. local as yeah. much as we could. So yep. Um, we'll put those links and people can go and help support those businesses if you wish. So and even even the toxic tea, the Labrador tea, I should stop calling it the toxic tea, it's Labrador tea. <laughs> there, there's like, it's high in vitamin C guys. Like, you know, nothing happened yeah. to us. <laughs> We're we experimented fine. on ourselves. We still look fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's got a little tick going. <laughs> we haven't, we haven't grown a third eyeball yet or anything. No, We're, so far so good. Yeah. Yeah, so make your fall feast. Yeah, and get the cookbook. Get it's, the cookbook. It's really yeah. worth it. Yeah. It's called To Wow. So good. And we only sampled a few small recipes. Yeah. There was so much more in there that looked like that we wanted to do. I yeah, have totally. to eat this. It's yeah. Oh, and we should mention that in a couple of days' time, following this episode on September 30th. Yep. I got that date right. <laughs> yeah. We, we will have a special bonus episode. That's right. So tune in for that. And it's really exciting because we are recording from a different venue. We've been invited to be part of the first podcast booth at the Calgary International Film Festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so. And exciting. the stars aligned and there's actually a film that is about cooking. Yes. Yay. So we're going to talk about it. We're really excited about it. If you want to hear us talk about home cooking with a... Well, about another chef and the movie. Not about with her. Them. No, <laughs> yeah. sadly, no. No. <laughs> you bring in your Ouija board. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now there's an idea. No. <laughs> All right. So tune in on the 30th for a special bonus. All right. That and enjoy some fall and family and food. Yes. Totally. All the Fs. Yes. <laughs> 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 And now for the fine print. You can find recipe information and photos on Instagram and Facebook at Three Kitchens Podcast. Why don't you leave us a comment? Give us ideas for future episodes. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you like and subscribe and follow, all of those things help other people find us. What are you guys talking about? The bag was delicious. <laughs>